Hey, Salvador Brimmer here. And today on this YouTube video, I want to cover how to write the perfect blog post. I mean, the blog post that not only captures attention, it gets people reading, it emotionally affects them, it makes them become a subscriber and part of your tribe. And also maybe you even make money at the same time. How do you design and write the perfect blog post? I'm talking about that on today's video. Okay, so first of all, there is no such thing as perfect, obviously. Um, perfect, I think of it as more so hitting a lot of the major boxes. And actually one of the great things that I recommend doing is creating a checklist, creating a checklist of items that you should hit with every single blog post. We also offer that when it comes to our course that we have that we run, um, but this is really something that's gonna keep you on track. So if nothing else, start to take some notes while you're watching this video, it will help a lot. And when you're looking back and you're reflecting on like, how do I put together a blog post? It will help you when it comes to that as well. The first part of the blog is actually the title and here's why. Back when I was first getting started, I was writing really comprehensive, long blog articles that I thought were very researched and very in-depth, but no one was reading them and it was so frustrating, man. It's almost like I wanted to pull my hair out. I couldn't understand it. I put so much work and effort into these blog articles. Then lo and behold, you know what? I'm like, maybe this blogging thing is not for me. I was ready to quit and I'm like, I gotta put out some kind of content. I wrote a very short, quick article, wasn't well researched at all, but what I did was I actually spent a little bit more time on the headline. So I clicked publish, checked in my blog, you know, about two days later, I had a bunch of traffic going to that article. And I'm like, what? It makes no sense. Like, why are people going to a lower quality article when I spend so much time on these other ones, right? But it's one of those things where a lot of the times writers will say that the book they spent the most time writing and is most personal to them is actually the one that sells less. Whereas the one that sells most is the one that's a little bit more sizzle and spicy and interesting and a good title and a good um, cover, not necessarily the interior, right? But um, the one that sells best is the one that is framed best. The takeaway from that story is that your headline matters more than the content of your blog article. And it's so sad. Like I almost want to cry just saying that to you right now, but it is so freaking true, man. If you don't have a good title, people are not going to read the article. If they don't read the article, they're not going to be able to take action. They're not going to be educated or informed, and they're not going to be emotionally affected or even get to know you as a writer. So you need a good title. And that's where it starts. We have some great headline formulas when it comes to the course, but you can also just go out there and you can become a critical reader. And by that, I mean, when you're reading other people's blogs, pay attention to the article titles that captured your eye. Pay attention to the article formats that as you're reading, you're like, wow, this is really good. Or when you're doing a Google search and you click on a link, you're like, why did that one draw my attention? Become a critical consumer or become a critical reader. And this is true of any kind of craft that you're trying to master it goes beyond blogging. If you want to become a better writer, you got to read more books. If you want to become a better blogger, you have to study other bloggers and the way they do their titles. So number one, the, the first tip, if you want to create a craft, a perfect blog article is to spend more time crafting a good headline that number one, captures attention and number two, attracts the right type of reader. Someone who is going to be a good fit for your blog and someone who's going to get value out of the article. Number two is SEO, search engine optimization. I cannot say it enough. And here's why. When I was getting started as a blogger as well, I was writing these, I think, pretty elaborate, interesting essays. Now you might be like, an essay, that sounds really boring. Well, I liked it. I thought it was really good. I spent a lot of time researching these things and providing quality content. But when I started to look at other bloggers, I'm like, why are they writing so differently than the way that I was taught to write in school? And over time, I've started to think about that and I've realized that school teaches you to write a certain way. And that way is not the best form of communication, whether it's with marketing, with blogging, or even corporate communication. School has gotten so many things wrong in our own life, teaching us subjects that we don't even need to use on a daily basis. The same is true, unfortunately, with writing. I've had so many people criticize my writing who are teachers when it comes to my school and high school and college and all that kind of stuff. Lo and behold, I'm doing it for a career. And here's the reason why. There's this very specific blog format when it comes to articles. And when I was first getting started, I didn't understand why some of my articles weren't ranking in Google. Why were people not checking it out? Why was I not getting more traffic? I think it's great, right? But other people don't. 
The reason is that I had no understanding of search engine optimization. And that basically means if you unpack that big word, keyword research, making sure that your, your blog articles are optimized for a specific keyword. So if you're writing a blog about hiking, let's just say in different hikes across the United States and some of the equipment and stuff that you're going to need if you're going to go hiking, what are some of the keywords someone might type into Google in order to come across your blog article? What are those words that they would use to describe their problem in order to see your article pop up in the Google search engine rankings? Keyword research is so important. And when you start to include keywords more frequently in your blog articles, you have to do it a little bit judiciously and you have to do it in the right way. Your articles will start to be found more often online and more people that are reading to them, they'll see these keywords and they'll be like, oh, this article is for me. And they're, they're scanning it initially and then they're gonna actually take the time to read the article. So make sure you have an understanding of search engine optimization and keyword research. The next part of crafting a perfect blog article is to understand how people consume the articles. The importance here is because it's really hard, I think, to write for someone if you don't understand how their brain works. If you don't understand how they're consuming your content or your material, you could have a lot of mistaken assumptions about the way that that person writes. Now, you might not be as dumb as I am, right? But when I was first getting started, I thought people read online from left to right because it seemed that way, right? If you're reading a book, you read from left to right, you go down the page and you read the entire article. Well, newsflash, that is not how people read online. Instead, what people do is they first scan the very first paragraph just to get an idea of the article. Then they start to scroll down. They look at the major headlines within that article, and then they actually decide whether or not they want to read the article. So reading is something that takes a lot of mental processing power and a lot of work. So most people are actually scanning first before they read an article. They might come to a specific section within the article and decide to read that section. Or when they're scanning down the page, they might be like, okay, this looks like a good quality article. I'm going to invest the time to actually read this thing. Cause there are so many articles online and someone would get lost if they were just reading from left to right and reading the entire article all the way down. They're scanning, they're scanning through the articles. If you look at Google analytics, you'll also see some of the bounce rates and the actual time spent on the site. And that's all because of scanning. Once someone has identified with their eye that the, the time invested in reading this article is going to be well worth it, then they will take the time to do so. So the, the next point when it comes to crafting a perfect blog article is to look at the headlines that you have going down the page. Look at the layout. If someone was just looking at the headlines, looking at some of the images and looking at the layout, would they say to themselves, yes, this is worth my time and worth investing my time to read this article? Or would they say no? I think there's a lot of people out there like myself who will just go on Google and like Google topic, come across an article, browse through it and be like, actually, this probably doesn't answer my question. I'm going to go look for another one, right? So make sure you pay attention to layout, make sure you're using headlines effectively and also embedding images, which I will get into next. The next point is that the perfect blog article is going to have images. Is this a, like a hard and fast rule? No, I've had articles rank in Google without any images that have gotten thousands and thousands and thousands of readers from Google that don't have any images. So it's not like this is a hard and fast rule, but think of this as you'll be better off if you include images. So it's very rare to me when I have an article rank well in Google that doesn't have any images. Now that could be the case. Again, you could also experience that, but as like a general rule, you want to have images that illustrate your major points. And you notice this on social media. If you're scrolling down your feed on Facebook, are you taking the time to read every single status update? No, probably not. Your eyes are gravitating towards videos that are playing and images, right? If you're scrolling down, you see an ad, you see the image first. And that actually then take, you're like, oh, that looks interesting. I'm going to take the time to read the description of the ad. Same thing goes with other sites like Instagram, right? That's all image based. And then there are some captions, but the image is always what captures someone's attention. So you want to have images in your blog post to create emotions in your readers. When your readers see other people, they see visual diagrams, they see different screenshots, that kind of stuff. It makes it seem like a much more helpful article and more worth the investment of time put in to read that article by including images. Not only will you emotionally affect readers, not only make them come away and be like, this is a good article. It looks very well illustrated and explained. It will also help them wrap their mind around what it is that you're trying to do. So for me personally, 
I'm a very visual learner. I like seeing diagrams, images. I also like reading, right? But it's not just, I don't just like reading and I also just don't like diagrams because they don't give you the full picture, right? So you have to have both of them in there. And you could even if you want in, embed some videos in your blog articles, but that, that's a little bit more advanced. So the next tip is if you want to have a perfect blog post, make sure you include images. Well, you're getting there, my friend. You're getting to the perfect blog article. Um, there are just a few more elements to hit. Now, I'm just gonna kind of rattle these off for you um, because I think they are important. And again, these are just kind of like checklist items. So first of all, you're gonna wanna be linking out to other blog articles that you've written. Not only does that help readers, it improves SEO, and people can stay on your website. They can not just be one page view. They can go from this page to this page to this page. So make sure you're interlinking articles. Another is, Think about monetization ahead of time. How are you going to monetize this article? Are you gonna use affiliate marketing? Are you relying on banner ads? Are you trying to push people to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with you or to sign up for a newsletter? What is the call to action? The call to action is a marketing term where it's basically saying after someone reads this article, let's just say they're in a prime state where they believe you are an expert. They're like, this guy knows what he's talking about. What do you want them to do next? Should they click on a link? Should they subscribe to your newsletter? Should they leave a comment on the blog, et cetera? Think a little bit about the call to action for that article. The final thing I'm going to mention on this video when it comes to crafting a perfect blog post actually doesn't have as much to do with the content. It, the actual, it's kind of weird. Like you think back in your life of the things that you have learned. And more often, if you think about when did you learn to ride a bike, right? You don't really think about that knowledge but you think about the person who taught you that knowledge, whether that's your father or whether that's another person who taught you how to ride a bike. Other things in life, when I, I don't remember when I first learned about like sentence structure and paragraph format, but I do remember some of the major teachers in my life that really affected me. People don't remember little tidbits of information as much and where they got it. You know, if they're trying to learn a process like fitness, they're probably learning from a whole host of blogs, right? And they can't immensely keep track of where they learned about, you know, this or that or this type of diet. They're not gonna be able to keep track of that. But what they do know and what they do remember are the fitness influencers, the individuals who they look up to, right? You also wanna have this approach when you're writing. So you don't wanna have like some stilted corporate speak when you're doing a blog article. You wanna inject personality. You wanna have a bit of copywriting techniques in this. You want people to feel like another human being is on the other side of this and they are almost reading that person's thoughts. Almost like that person is speaking directly to them. And what that does is it creates an emotional bond with the reader. I can't tell you the number of people who have emailed me and been like, Sal, I feel like I know you, man. I've been reading your articles for like the last three months and I literally feel like I know you. How can we do business together, right? And that's really the best kind of frame for someone to approach you. You want people to not only come away saying, that was freaking educational, this was easy to read, but also I feel like I like that guy. Like this guy is cool. You know, I know a little bit about his personality and I feel a connection to that individual. And that's how you create a brand. That is how you set yourself in your blog out from all of the other competition, all the other blogs out there. They're not gonna remember, oh, this was this person's content. They're gonna remember this individual, this teacher who is helping them with whatever problems they have in life. I hope you liked this video. Again, my name is Salvador Brigman. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Give me a thumbs up. Come subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Let us know. And check out in the description the links there because there's some great stuff to go and check out. But again, my name is Sal and I will see you next time. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button below and subscribe to our channel for more useful content.